Move along Don't there now. Kill Alexander, you stupid ape. Release me. You're going to... What, now? She betrayed Alexander. I'd sooner die than free her. Never know what that guy wants next. Fine. Have fun. Well, have you found time in your busy schedule to do your duty and release me? Be quick about it. Who knows when that magistrate might return? God's teeth, it feels good to move again. Now, best scurry off before that magistrate wanders back. Meet me at my home in Driftwood, and we can see what you're made of. doesn't feel like playing, but... The Meister sits slumped in a chair, looking around the room as she works her shoulder with one hand. It looks like it was dislocated by the gallows. Damnable red cloak baboons ransacking my wardrobes. As if I would keep ancient valuable secrets in a pearl with my unmentionables. She takes a deep breath, and with a twist, a click, and a screech of pain, she shoves her shoulder back into its socket. <laughs> I swear by the seven if, <laughs> if we did not have more important matters to attend to. Reaching across the table, she pulls a bowl of hot water towards her and fishes some bandages, a needle and thread out of a box. She slowly starts to tend to her wounds. 
At least the barbarians were unable to club their way into my vault, so everything you need should be safe. Apparently I had a claw in murdering their darling divine-in-waiting Alexander. The Meister wrenches the bandage, pulling the fabric tight against her wound. She winces before tying it off in a neat knot, but you can see the red stain already spreading across the fabric. Never mind that. <sighs> that I was here the entire time. Apparently my cunning transcends time, space and common sense. Meister Siva freezes, her eyes locked on you, her claws mid-swipe, cutting a new stretch of bandage. <sighs> Why on earth should I have thought anything else? Not that I was <laughs> sorry to hear about his death. I doubt my grin helped matters during the interrogation. Enthusiasm? On a weekday? My word. We shall begin once we have <coughs> the tools we need from my vault. You may have been chosen, Godwoken, but the coming divine requires more than a supernatural pat on the head. Come, Godwoken. It is time to see just how awake you are. Fortunately, the Magisters pay as much attention to art as they do to fashion. Kindly remove that painting from the wall. I pray my instructions will not be too technical for you. <clears throat> Push the button. Your talent for following simple instructions fills me with wonder and pride. Now, kindly go to the vault and enter the combination. I shall call it out as you go. A stone door lies flush with the floorboards. Etched whirls in the granite frame a delicate rotary dial. Gleaming under the dim light, the metallic dial almost seems to wink at you. Taking your time, you carefully enter the combination. The metallic sounds of the tumblers falling within the mechanism let you know you entered the code correctly. Excellent. Follow me. Your time is at hand, Godwoken. about while I catch my breath. Come speak to me when Ancient you wish to rooms, proceed. Weird and try not to break anything in the meantime. An A vast continent full of people, full of destinies.
Opening the door, you see a selection of ingredients thrown together in no particular order.
rubbish. Rubbish. Meister is examining her wounds, prodding at this, wincing at that. Her face seems grim as she turns to you. Do you know what it means to have the power of the divine, Godwoken? You've been playing pretend all your life, but the reality is quite, quite different. No, becoming the divine means taking on the power of all the gods and the responsibility for all the races. The divine was created by the gods to shelter us from the void. The divine cannot use his power for anything else. Very well then. Let's see if we can't snatch divinity from the jaws of the void. The ritual itself is quite simple. Drop some black root in the bowl, mix in a little blood, set the concoction aflame, and then inhale the smoke. Ignore any feelings of dizziness, burning in your lungs, or a dire sense of existential dread. They're all perfectly normal, although you will need to sacrifice a little sauce along the way. Everything you need is here. The ingredients are in the cupboard, the sauce in the fountain, the ritual is described in the tome by the bookcase, and, well, I'm sure a fine reptile like yourself will have no trouble summoning some fire. The Meister looks back at her wounds, curiously prodding them as fresh blood oozes out, staining her claws. And please do not lose anything. I pray you'll be more careful with my materials than with your empire. Come on, come on, let's keep moving. What, this old gaggle of weirdos? Oh, she's all right. A lot of bark, but I think she really cares about what we're doing. Better that than a sweetheart who'd sooner watch you walk off a cliff than shout, look out! My kind of salty old crank. She certainly seems to want to help us. You don't get many of those in life. I've learned to appreciate them where I find them. I don't know about home, but I do sort of miss the gang I travel with now and then. Crawler, Madcap, Papa Joris for sure. Musicians, mostly. 
We all had our own stories, our own troubles, but when we were together and the music was with us, it was like none of that mattered at all. When you have people like that around you, you know, a family, even rain feels like sunshine. Well, I think I should focus on getting this demon out of my head. And of course, I think you should help me. And if we pick up a few new sauce tricks along the way, so be it. Opening the door, you see a selection of ingredients. Through After a quick rummage, you spot the black root, nestled between the grated dragon's tongue and drudenay oil. You gather up the black root, obsidian lance and ancient bowl, and kick the door of the cupboard closed. As you suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts to swim and cloud. There is an intense pounding in your head and you can feel the world fading. As the world fades away, you lose all sense of being grounded. You reach out, but you could feel yourself falling slowly, sinking into the depths of your own soul. This is the deepest recess of my soul, but it looks like the Hall of Echoes. Bathed in the half-light of these starless barons, you spot a figure you could only describe as a second self. It looks haggard and weak, its very voice but a feeble echo of your own. Red Prince, come. Come closer, so that you may see me as I truly am. Look me in the eyes. The apparition clasps your face in its shaking hands. You suddenly feel your eyes tingle. 
everything becomes brighter, sharper. Blacks and whites become glorious bursts of color, then fade back into their accustomed spectrum. Blind eyes shine brightly. Speak the spell and see. Please, speak the spell. God is the strange mirror image of yourself. Before you stands the goddess Zolstissa in all her spectral glory. You know me now, don't you? I saved you from drowning. I blessed you, made you powerful. And now I've come to seek some power in return. Your God-woken soul is my last refuge, my last bastion. May as well make the best of what you have to offer. Zor Stissa nourishes herself from the source that abounds in your presence. You feel it deep down inside yourself. Ah, yes. Just what I needed. I tell you, dying just doesn't become a god. The void itself is hunting down the gods, leeching us in ways we never thought possible. Droplet by droplet we are being drained. We are battling for our very survival. It's a battle we're losing. And should we truly lose, all will be cast into oblivion. To save us both, as a matter of fact, you must realize Red Prince that our fates are now as one, just as our souls are now as one. We are I. Together we are a force to be reckoned with. But if we seek to survive the onslaught of the Void, we stand no chance unless we become vastly more powerful than we are now. That means there is but one place we can go, the Well of Ascension. It most certainly will be. The Well of Ascension is a lake, a pool of pure source, in which the powers of the Seven lie united. We gave them up freely to create the first divine. Each of us donated half of that which makes us gods. To bathe in the lake is to become our chosen. That is where the road to divinity leads, and you must be the first to reach it at all costs. There you touch upon the very heart of the matter. The void is stronger than ever. A new divine won't be enough. You need to go to the Well of Ascension. Not to bathe in the source of the Seven, but to take it. All of it. Only he who claims everything will be everything. The Void's doom. This world's liberator. It's very simple, really. They will either bow to you or be undone. But of course, that is what they are saying to their own god woken as we speak. We both know they won't bow, just like we both know you will never bow to them. Only one can become a god strong enough to safeguard our world. One at the expense of all others. So make no mistake, Red Prince. Chances are the road to divinity will be paved with dead gods. 
their blood on your blood-red hands. But don't let that dismay you. For these sins will be washed clean by the knowledge you committed them to save all of existence. To save your kin, and your loved ones, and your empire. They will be at your mercy, which is vastly preferable to you being at theirs. Wouldn't you agree? So fret not, but revel in the promise of the lake. I will lead you there when you're ready, when you've become a true master of the source and speak the language of creation itself. Our journey will be fraught with peril. It is a pilgrimage of challenges that will require you to command source like only a god woken can and wield its most powerful spells. Laughter rolls and echoes into infinity. You flatter me, my prince. But if all I had to do was give, you would long since have received. We are I now. The spells you need to know I will teach you when you are ready. But first you must learn to channel the source in greater volumes. That is why you need to seek masters of the source. You must make them teach you, so that you may become a master in turn. So, return to Rivalon, and seek out these sages where they dwell. Convince them to share with you their deep-seated bond with the Source. Once you have, you may return to me here. Something that'll make you understand that for a god, there is precious little difference between the living and the dead. Source is. It is a constant, a subject of neither time nor transience. All of life is source, and in source it is. Immortally so. You have the vision of a god now. Eyes that can see spirits the souls of the dead made manifest in source. Speak the spell during your peregrinations and you will see them. Where the dead lie, the dead linger. And so much more. But I'm no longer who I once was, bound to you as I've become. I will teach you what I can, but the knowledge that will expand the bounds of your soul that you'll have to hunt for yourself. Best of luck, Red Prince. A man's spirit stands before you, clad in scholarly dress. When your eyes meet, he staggers back, terrified. Sweet Armadia, why do you test your chronicler so, haunting me with spirits? Am I cursed? Has the goddess turned her back on me? The chronicler shudders, looking sick to his stomach. Again. This again. I sleep, then I wake, and another piece of the world is gone. The Empress. It was her. It was that armor. I died for it, and now I'm trapped here. I died. Oh, Amadia. Why can't I escape? Why is there never a way out? Me? I archived Rivalon's history. I used ink to immortalize greatness on the page. A lizard empress sought my services. She needed an ancient design restored from a damaged text. She told me the design was brilliant. When the armor was forged, the Empress showed it to me, and... and... she trapped me inside. Consumed me. If it wasn't for me, the armor wouldn't exist at all. This... 
No, this is my fault. If I knew the way, I'd shout until every god heard me. But I have no idea. I simply want this to end. The Chronicler puts his head in his hands, collapsing in silent defeat. The Meister stares intently at you. Her eyes are tired and bruised, but determined. Still alive? Gods above, there might be something to you after all. She leans in, her bloody tongue flickering hungrily about your face. Tell me, what did you see? What you know? She sighs impatiently as you hack up the last of the green smoke. You can't channel enough source. Gods be damned, why couldn't you have a nice simple problem? Finding an orc to dance the hornpipe, perhaps. You may well have that potential, but at the same time... Hmm, how to put this? I don't trust you to tie your bootlaces without accidentally hanging yourself, let alone controlling the powers of creation. So we must seek alternatives. Alas, the only Source Masters not yet hauled off to Fort Joy or turn into meat puppets are those too dangerous or cunning for the Magisters to contain. Sorcerers that allowed their power to corrupt them. Many are wicked, cruel, vile, and generally not good teacher material, but we may have no others to turn to. Were the circumstances any different, I would indeed agree. However, it is the path we walk, no... <coughs> no matter what the cost. No matter... <sighs> what is asked of you. The Meister doubles over in a violent coughing fit, struggling for breath. After a few moments, she regains her composure, wiping a thin smear of blood from the corner of her mouth. No matter what is asked of you, you must learn from them. And you do not seem to be paying attention. Sorcerers, evil, controlling your source, saving Rivalon, please. <laughs> please tell me at least some of this rings a bell. Your focus, your only focus, must be on finding these masters. On finding the secrets to divinity. Nothing else matters. The Magisters have kept ledgers with all known sorcerers. Especially the powerful ones not yet captured. They would be an invaluable resource. But do be careful not to get caught. I was their <coughs> guest for a time. And I promise you the gallows was the most comfortable part of the experience. And if their barracks turns out to be as empty as their skulls, just try to keep an ear to the ground. There may still be powerful sorcerers hiding in these lands. As she speaks, one of her wounds reopens, a dark red stain spreading across her tunic. She hisses in frustration and starts to bind the gash. I wish there was more I could do, but in this condition, I would be more a hindrance than a boon. Godspeed, and remember, do whatever it takes. Good find. Quirkus, what are you looking at? Egad, stop gawking at the shield. 
You ought to be quite used to such journeys into that stone realm by now. Meanwhile, the acorn draws nearer. I read through some tomes I saw that cranky old lizard carrying. Some fascinating leads, but nothing like the power we need to stop the Knights of Dre and their wicked plot. I, um... Uh, <laughs> Our gargantuan friend is easily impressed. Wait until it learns that I'm a knight, a scholar, and a wizard capable of saving the world. No, of course it knows that already, Quercus. Yes, yes, I'm aware it's the entire basis of our partnership. No, I most certainly do not feel the need to return the compliment. I owe our shield my life several times over. I hardly need to grovel and thank it each time. I'm sure it knows I appreciate it. Now, if you're quite finished ogling your favorite long-legged scratching post, we need to get on and save the world already. The spirit of an elegant elven woman materializes before you. She seems surprised. You... you can see me. A god woken in my presence. You honor me. I am the Meister's apprentice. I study under her, but I do not learn. I hear tales of the ritual, of what lies beyond. Such wonders, such powers. I decide to pursue them myself. Meister tells me it cannot happen, that I am not Godwoken. But in my heart, I know I am special. I try, I burn the root, I breathe the smoke and it burns me back. No air fills my lungs, only fire. When the darkness falls, I cannot cry out. I leave my life behind with a shameful whimper. The spirit looks at you regretfully. It is hard to hear of such power and not covet it for yourself. I lie to myself and convince myself that I am special. But I am not special. I am dead. Stay strong on your holy mission, Godwoken. The Meister sits slumped in her chair. You notice that some of her scales have dropped to the floor. What news? Can you channel enough source? Are you powerful enough to proceed? Ah, of course. My supply has rather gone up in smoke. You can find more in the cloister woods to the northwest of Driftwood. Hardly a charming place, but it grows nowhere else. Then why, pray tell, are you wasting both my time and your own? Go!